All right, coming up next, the economic week ahead. We're getting you prepared for what's coming down the line. Plus, how this whole big crisis is cutting straight through to the global lobster market. The what? The lobster market. Really? This is a perfect example about how businesses all over the country and all over the world are being directly impacted. So it's just how closely everything is linked these days from Iceland to Maine. We're coming right back in full force, shell in claw. <laughs> Two minutes. NBC's Janet Shamling is live for us tonight in South Portland, Maine, for a look at the impact that the credit crisis is having, and of all things, the lobster business. Can you, can you believe it on luxury foods as well? I mean, it's just what you're talking about. The same factors that have crippled so many businesses across the country. Softening demand and the credit crisis have taken a devastating blow on the lobster economy here in Maine throughout this entire region. And yet the other side of the coin is this. Tonight at this restaurant, Joe's Pote House in South Portland, they've got a full house, and that's because the special is two lobsters for the price of one. But those on the other side, the lobstermen and the whole wholesalers say they don't know how they're going to make it. For lobster lovers, these Maine waters are nothing short of a gold mine, harvesting 80% of the U.S. catch. And yet for lobstermen like Stephen Train, the only gold is in the surrounding fall foliage. With what we made this year, we're not going to live through the winter. Lobster prices have tanked, down 20% in just the past few weeks. Now at levels not seen since the 80s. Train gets just over $2 a pound. I personally don't want to sell these lobsters at this price, but I'm hoping that with this price where it is, the product will move and move fast. But falling financial markets have spoiled appetites. Here you are. Consumption is sinking. The industry is shell-shocked. It's bad. Uh, I've never seen it this bad in 30 years. McElhaney's wholesale business usually ships half its lobsters to Canada, but Iceland's banking collapse has frozen Canada's credit. Direct in, it kills lobsters. And other big buyers, restaurant chains and grocery stores, have slashed their orders. Yep. Four. Four of them. You got it. Yeah. Retailer Joe Ray sees a silver lining. He's but passed his savings $10. on. Yeah. Now at $3.99 a pound, lobster is cheaper than hamburger. Our retail's up 50%. This is the first time I've been doing this for 20 years that I've seen prices this low. Right. Um, people are coming in and they're just amazed. I mean, this lobster right here weighs roughly two pounds. It's $8. An affordable luxury for consumers, a devastating hit for the industry, trapped in the claws of a sinking economy. And the off-the-boat price, the wholesale price for lobster, is just continues to tumble day by day. I want to give you some perspective here. This is a three-pound lobster. The wholesaler and the fishermen right now are only getting about $2.50 a pound. In some parts of Maine, even less. So for a lobster like this, you know, it would not be very much money at all. Probably half of what they took home last year. Back to you, Bill. We, we are all shell-shocked here. Well, Janet, is it feeding through to the retail price? I mean, is lobster cheaper at the restaurants, Janet? What are, what are they charging there for you the two what? lobsters tonight? Okay, uh, the two lobsters were $27.95, wow. but it was two lobsters for $27.99. Five. Well, it's an upscale restaurant. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's a great price. Profit margins are good, you know. The tail just fell when you said how. <laughs> <laughs> Should I ask this to you guys? Very sad. Morning delivery in New sure, York. Sure, gas prices right. are you know, cheaper. We, we, we were all joking, but listen to what she said. Welcome to globalization. What she said was, Very interesting. Iceland fails. Yep. Okay. Canada, Canada can't get we have credit. A map of they this. buy fewer lobsters. It's we have, amazing. We have a map of this, and what we show is this was the good side of globalization. There you go. The lobsters went to Canada where the wholesalers bought it there, and the Canadians borrowed money from Iceland, which, as you know, they had... It's interesting, there's three pillars in... in uh, there were three banks in Iceland. That was just a, a coincidence were. right there. Those three pillars went down. Basically, those three banks basically They're went down, and they have really collapsed right now, and so that money is not coming, so they can't buy the lobsters from me. Jared, how, how real will this deflationary environment be? I mean, Janet's talking about yeah. the plunge in prices for these things. Uh, my, my lobster index is forecasting a significant decline uh, after listening to that story. I mean, look, uh, if you look at inflation forecasts, uh, we have inflation falling by half in coming months from something like 5% year over year to 2.5% year over year, maybe a little bit higher than that. And that's, of course, driven by energy. I'm sure lobsters are in there somewhere. You know, the lobster story very much does remind me of the energy story where you see this deflation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the upside is that we've got lower prices. The downside, 
is that it's uh, in large part demand destruction. And so, you know, it, it, the job market and consumers are obviously hurting here. And when demand falls back, you're going to see lower prices. Now, we, we're not looking at stagflation. Remember, that was a concern a while ago, rising yeah. unemployment and not inflation. Anymore. But at the same time, we're clearly looking at a recession. And most of us believe a fairly protracted one. Mm. Here's what I don't understand, Steve. We're printing money like mad hmm. historically doesn't that eventually at some point lead to it, inflation it, it should but the issue there is if we could see how many people are in that restaurant right there i saw some empty tables that is a kind of substitute for what we call velocity how many people are there spending the dollars that are out in the economy exactly. what happened and i don't want to use this analogy because it's what i think is going to happen to the economy in the great depression there was money out there there was no velocity of money no multiplier of money move. so it's not inflationary if everybody he's not spending and doing it so if the restaurants are empty if people aren't making money and by the way if you have a bumper crop of lobsters on top of that then you don't have an inflation problem yeah <laughs> janet and uh, bon appetit thank <laughs> thank you our, our best to the uh, lobster sure. industry over there and jared always good to see you thank right. you nice to see you thank tonight. you